Okay. All right. Resume recording. Am I recording now? Um, I think I am recording. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So the last thing, the last thing we were talking. But before we start, uh, um, did you manage to get that movie, The Help? The Help. Uh, Uthman, you asked me last time. Did you manage to get it? The Help. Uthman, no, you can talk. Yeah. No, I couldn't find it. Okay, anybody Thanks, else? Sir. Okay, anybody else? May, May, are you raising your hand or you're just trying? May Abu Mansi. No? Okay, you're just trying your luck. Okay. Anybody? It is available. I couldn't, um, I saw it once, but I can't, uh, I can't find it anymore. But I wanted to see at least the second movie, Django, Django Unchained. At the same time, what I want from you, um, there are some names that I am using while analyzing this story. These are names of um, great philosophers, theorists, and national liberation movement leaders from Africa and the Caribbean. I want you, I want you to know their name. Okay, remember once I use the name, of course, everybody knows Edward Said. Okay, I'm going to write. I'm going to write and I want you to find out about them. The important part is that every time I analyze a story from Africa and even from Palestine in this course, I use their theories. I use, I refer to their theories. The first one, if you remember, the first one we talked about was Edward Said, right? Edward Said, everybody knows Edward Said. But I want you to find out more about him. Read a little bit about Edward Said. The second one is considered, some people call him the prophet, the prophet of um, national liberation movements in the 20th century, especially, especially, African uh, liberation movement. His name is Franz Fanon. Franz Fanon. All right. He's from islands, um, islands in the Caribbean, not African, islands in the Caribbean, the Martinique, the Martinique Islands. And he joined the French army, he was a psychologist. Uh, in, in Algeria, then he decided to leave the French colonizers and join the French, the, sorry, the Algerian revolution. And he wrote, he died very young, he wrote two fantastic books, two fantastic books that all um, national liberation um, members and leaders are familiar with. First book is the Richard, sorry, the Earth. In Arabic, I think it has been, I'm not very good at translating, but I don't know how to translate, but it has been translated as Al-Mu'adhabun ala al-Ard, or Mu'adhabu al-Ard, I think. The Richard, the Earth, and the second one, and this is, pay attention to the title, Black Skin, Black skin, you remember Diwana? Okay, I am. I don't know what happened to the chat session. I'm sorry about this. Okay, a black skin, white masks. Do you have to know all of this? Yes, you have to. Not difficult. And I'm sure when you read a little bit about them, you will understand. You will understand. The two books, 
by Franz Fanon. The other two names that are so important for our reading this story and other story we are going to read, uh, the other second uh, or the other third name, sorry, third name is um, Amy Cesare. Uh, you know, the name is difficult. Cesare. Amy Cesare from Cape Verde, um, uh, Eastern or Western, on West, West of Africa, yeah. And the last name, the leader, Martal. Al find out, wanted to find out about them, but every time we are reading a story, especially from Africa, we use these people's theories, all right? Okay. Keep those names, titles of books are very important. Even for us Palestinians, of course, I chose them because they are important for us to understand our own narrative, the Palestinian narrative. The first short story we read, you remember, was written by Ghassan Kanafani, right? Um, Ghassan Kanafani. And that was part, part of the Palestinian narrative. Narrative is a story or novel, a Palestinian narrative. We are, now as we are speaking together, as we are, as I'm teaching this course, we are trying in a way to rewrite, rather write, not rewrite, write the Palestinian narrative from our perspective. In other words, we want Excuse me. We want to have voice, voice. Okay. So, what does this tell me about the way Diwana commits suicide? Remember the way she commits suicide. She slits her own throat from the left ear to the right ear. She. It's, it's as if as if she's leaving us with a message as if she's sending a message that i control my own voice right you remember the father in the land of sad oranges don't forget we are reading comparative literature we are studying comparative literature so every single time we come across something important in that girl, I'll try to relate it, compare it, and contrast it. Events, even the style, not only events, not only the plot. We're talking about also style, the form uh, that Hassan Kanafani uses in the land of sand oranges. Okay, the last thing we discussed, if you remember, and the last character was that um, we met last time. You remember his name? If you can remind me, uh, the drunkard, the Senegalese man used to work as a sailor who spent, if that's his first name, that's correct, Korea, absolutely. Thank you, Shuruk. If Korea, that's correct. Now I remember. If Korea used to work as a sailor, and, um, and he also was a soldier and spent 20 years in France when also France went under occupation. Which occupation? Which other country during the Second World War? Which other European country occupied? German. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Germany. Germany. So this is important. It's like us, uh, Shabab, we are Sabaya. It's like us when we say those Israeli Jews, Jews who were persecuted by the Germans, by the Nazis, 
how can they do this to us? Now, what did Edward Said say? Why? Pay attention. I really want you as Palestinians to understand how many times you, you hear this on TV, how many times you ask yourself, you say, why isn't the West sympathizing with us? Well, the West, the Western governments, because, listen carefully, because they suffer from guilt complex. Guilt complex. Why do they have that complex? Because Jews were their victims in Europe. Jews were their victims in Europe. And after the Second World War, the West, the European West in particular, started having guilt complex. Now, our problem is that we are the victims of the victims. You follow what I'm saying? This is what Edward Said had to say. That is our problem. We are the victims of the victims. Yeah? Going back now, the land of sad oranges, all right? Let me come back to um, Eve Korea. Eve Korea says Divana that she should not be going to France with the French family because he knows he has the experience of living as a black man, as an African in France. He knows he he was rather the receiving end of French racism. He was the victim of the receiving end of French racism, exactly like us now, Palestinians being the receiving end of Zionist of Zionist and Israeli racism. We know what it means to live under the rule of racist ideology. Are we clear? And this is the reason why he's a victim. And this is the reason why he's telling her not to go. He's been there. He's done that. He lived there for 20 years. And then he becomes, you remember the word, he, 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 he says it, wreck, total, in other words, completely destroyed. He becomes a wreck, destroyed as a result of living there, but not as a French man, not as a white man, not as a European citizen, but as a black man. This gives me now, if you are following what I'm saying, gives me an idea why as to why the title is important of this story black girl we are talking here about yes colonialism but also racism okay i need a definition of racism already know colonialism racism your race your racial identity important here and i want you to relate that racial identity to the the way she commits suicide you see now why if korea if korea's um character is important is everybody following you can hear me and everything is okay yes Wonderful. Okay, so you are following. Very good. So now let's go back. He says, if Korea goes the monsieur, the master, and um, he says to him, I have been against her going. All right? You are taking her to France, and I have been against her going. Okay, let's read together. The monsieur says, you haven't we haven't um, forced her to go. She wants to. Remember, we discussed this last time. 
how free are you in making your own decision when you are under occupation you think you are free but are you truly free shababu ya sabaya you remember the elections al-intikhabat legislative council elections uh, in 2006 if you remember january 2006 and before that we had elections in 1996 but not in free palestine i did not vote for example i did not why because i don't believe that you can have free elections under occupation for example that's my opinion i'm not saying you have to have the same i'm sure you understand what i'm saying that um, she wants she says she's free she wants to go right and the question is how free can you be under colonialism you think you are free but are you free you see so there's a question there's a question about freedom and i want you seriously think about it. here i'm going to write the question because because i'm serious about it because i want you to define freedom now i have 17 students listening to me right listening to me explaining this reading this story with them and asking this question and i'm telling you that if i ask every and each one of you to give me an answer i will have 17 different answers so here is the question what is freedom right i want you this is why I started by telling you about Franz Fanon, Edward Said, Aimé Césaire. I think I misspelled Aimé Césaire. Okay. Césaire. Césaire. This is how you write his name. Sorry, I think I misspelled it. Yeah, of course, French name. All right. Aimé Césaire. So what did they say about freedom? How do we define freedom? Now, when you say, I want freedom, as Palestinians, what do you want? We want freedom. What do you mean? What do you mean by freedom? Freedom in Gaza? State in Gaza and the West Bank? The land of sad oranges. That story. What is freedom for them? State in Palestine, in um, Gaza and the West Bank, or return, right of return? A question, just a question. What was freedom for Nelson Mandela? Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in jail, Yasabaya, we are correct? 27 years in jail. He was arrested in 1964. He was released in 1990. Exactly 27 years. They offered him freedom more than once. He said, no, that's not what I want. I want freedom for the whole country. I want equality. For Nelson Mandela, freedom meant equality. There is one sentence that I always quote said by none other than Edward Said. I'm going to write it because I know some of you are interested. Freedom, sorry, sorry, equality or nothing. Obviously, for Edward Said, as a Palestinian and American, of course, he said, for me, it's equality. For Nelson Mandela, it was equality. For many of us, it is right of return. Then after we, we return, what kind of state do we want? So I want you to think about this question. If somebody comes, a foreigner comes and asks you, as a Palestinian, what do you want? Then you say, okay, freedom, justice. Quality, right of return. Okay, define that. Let's look at Chief Korea. Chief Korea was not a free man. Chief Korea spent 20 years as an exploited, exploited, colonized man living in France. 
and he came back to Senegal wreck. So he have a choice, freedom of choice. Does uh, what's her name? Diwana, sorry. Does Diwana have freedom of choice? Only at the end of the story, think herself. She chooses. She chooses to kill herself. She didn't. She doesn't want to be killed by the colonizer. That is freedom of choice. You have a voice. And you cannot control my voice. My voice, mine, right? Voice. My throat, mine. You can't control it. I want to be a free woman. In the way I choose, die. You enslaved me. You, um, you, you controlled my life. But I control the way I die. This is why. This is why we respect our shuhada. See, this is why we respect our martyrs. You know, when somebody dies, he is he's a shaheed. The martyr, because if you are under colonialism, of course, you have to choose how to live your life to give it a meaning, give a meaning to your life. Now, that might be one of the meanings of freedom. We respect Abu Ali Mustafa, we respect Ahmed Yassin, we respect Abu Jihad, we, you know, why? Shqaqi, etc., etc., Razan al Najjar, Tadi Abu Ghazala. Look at the names. Everybody knows the names. Why do we know their names? Because they are heroes. Why are they heroes? They are dead. They're dead. For us, we say no. We respect Hassan Tarafani. He's dead. Yeah. They are martyrs. The, the way the, the, the word martyrdom, meaning what? The word martyrdom, martyrdom means that you choose to give meaning to your life and your death you see the way you die gives a meaning to your life otherwise inshallah if we take novel two we will discuss this next semester uh, we will extend our discussion about the meaning of death the meaning of life etc etc and notice this story is about death but whose death the colonizers death here one of the stories that we will discuss after this one inshallah is also about the meaning of death okay. so notice how we spent half of our class now just discussing this concept how free are we in choosing what to do and where to go in gaza we're not free because well israel controls everything it controls everything Everything. Same thing. Let's look at the sentence again. We haven't forced her to go. She wants to. Monsieur answered dryly. Look at Tiv's answer. Certainly. Certainly. Okay, you're right. But look at the point here. What young African doesn't dream of going to France? Okay. Everybody dreams of going to France. Everybody dreams of going to America. Why? Land of... Land of dreams, of course, or the dreamland, land of honey and milk. That's that is a dream. Dreams are fictions. Reality. When she goes to France, she finds she finds out that it's not a dream; that it is an actual fact, nightmare. And we know the difference between dreams and nightmares. So the of Korea is very realistic. He says, of course. What young Africa doesn't dream of going to France? Unfortunately, they confuse, pay attention, important Yasabaya, if you can underline, they confuse living in France with being, here we go, a servant in France. When you go to France, in fact, you're not living in France. You are serving France, you become a servant in France. Okay, so that's not freedom. That's not, it's a form of slavery. It's a form of slavery. 
I come from the village next to Diwanas and Kasamans. There, we don't stay, we don't say the way you do that it is the light that attacks the moth. You remember we discussed this metaphor. We don't say the light attracts the moth. No, but the other way around. In my country, Kazamans, we say that the darkness pursues the moth. And what is darkness here? Who's darkness? Colonialism. Colonialism. And the moth, the butterfly, is Africa or the colonized world. This is a story, Diwana. Here, we think that France, of course, is, or, is the light. So we want to go to the light. But, but we found out, realistically speaking, that it is dark. Darkness, colonialism pursues, follows. Look at this, it follows the moth. Think about Palestine before Israel was established. Same thing. Same thing. Clear? Good. Everybody understands what we are saying here? Okay, this is excellent. This piece, this paragraph is wonderful. And I'm sure you are going to read it again. Okay, we have. All right, 10 minutes, it's okay. Um, the meantime, Divana returned, escorted by several women. They were chatting a lot, each begging for a little souvenir, a little souvenir from, from France, of course. Uh, Divana promised happily she was smiling, her white teeth gleaming. The others are at the dock, said one. Don't forget my dress. You know, when you travel, like us Palestinians and Arabs, the whole family or the whole village or the whole town wants to say goodbye. All right. So one of them says, don't forget my dress. For me, some shoes for the children. You've got the size in your suitcase. And remember the swing, the sewing machine. Uh, the petticoats too. Right, and tell me how much the hair straightening irons cost, and also the price of a red jacket with big buttons, size 44. This is a metaphor for a culture of consumerism. You know, they want all these things dresses, irons, red jackets, uh, shoes, etc., from France. Don't forget to send a little money to your mother in boot book. Uh, uh, so she's going to France and they want her to send the money to her mother. Each one had something to tell her, some request to make of her. Diwana promised her face was radiant. Um, if Korea took the suitcase, pushing it drunkenly, but he was drunk, you remember, he became drunkard as a result of living for 20 years in France. He paid, he's paying an extremely heavy price, but not roughly into the car. Her go, girls! Do you think money, listen to what he's saying. Do you think money grows on trees in France? Very good. Very realistic. Do you think money grows on these in France, she'll have something to say about that when she gets back. When she comes back, she will tell you something else. That is not as good as you think. It's not a dream as you think. Loud protests from the women. Goodbye, little cousin. Take care of yourself. You have the address of the cousin Cologne, uh, city in France. Write to him as soon as you get there. He will help you. Come, give me a kiss. They are kissing her, saying goodbye. Her cousins. They all kissed each other goodbye. Monsieur was getting impatient. He wants to go. He started up the motor to indicate politely that he wished they would be done with it. 
that Pijo, Pijo, Pijo the car was moving, everyone waved goodbye to Diwana. And that would be the last time they see her. That's it, because she doesn't come back. We already know that. We already know that she's dead. So everybody said goodbye, hoping that she would come back with the things they've asked her to bring. She was going like a moth towards the darkness in France. And at the dock, it was the same. Everybody wanted to say goodbye to her. Again, relatives, friends, little commissions. Everyone pressed around her, always under the watchful eye of Monsieur. This is important. Notice the white Monsieur was always watching you are always under the watchful eye of the colonizer you know what i'm thinking about i'm thinking about zanana zanana what's that what's the watchful eye of the israeli colonizer i'm sure you agree with me we have 24 hour buzz the sky zanana what is that exactly like the one we are always, we are always under the watchful eye of the Israeli colonizer, officer. She embarked, so she was on board now. Ship. Week at sea from, uh, from Senegal, France, a week at sea. No news, no news. She would have written if she had been keeping a diary, which means she did not have a diary. In which case she had always she'd always have she'd always have had to know how to read and write. Another disadvantage. Poor. That's a disadvantage. Poverty is a disadvantage. Being poor. So poor. Um, literate. Is illiterate. So literacy is another disadvantage. Black, another disadvantage. Is black, black girl. African, another disadvantage. Colonized, another disadvantage. Woman, of course the woman in this course understand this better. It's also another disadvantage. Look how many disadvantages now. No wonder. The end, she, she decides to kill herself. Water in front, behind, port, starboard, surrounded by water and the sea, across the Mediterranean. Nothing but a sheet of liquid surrounded by uh, the water and above it, the sky. Uh, when the boat landed, Monsieur was there. So she arrives. She arrives in France. And who was waiting for her? Monsieur, because he took the plane, took a flight, him and his family, not her. The family took a flight. They flew to France. And he was there, alone, waiting for her. After the formalities, they quickly made their way to the Côte d'Azur, where they live. She devoured everything with her eyes, you know, to devour, to eat, of course, but here with her eyes, everything. This is France. I can't believe it. I can't believe I am in France. She devoured everything with her eyes, marveling, astonished. All right? It's like us when we leave Gaza, right? I remember the first time I left Gaza. I, you know, I was looking everywhere. I thought everybody in Egypt was Mahmoud Yassin and Hussein Fahmi and Suad Husni. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then when I, you know, I flew to other countries in the world, same thing. Of course, it disappears later. And now when I travel, it's very normal. And the first time, and here you have an African woman visiting France. She devoured everything with her eyes. She was um, astonished. She packed every detail into her head, remembered everything. It was beautiful. Of course, Francois is beautiful. Africa seemed... Now, here is the problem. 
Now she starts making those comparisons. She no longer likes Africa. There, false consciousness. Okay? Formation of false consciousness. Don't forget this, the definition. False consciousness. Africa seemed a sordid slum by comparison to what? By comparison to France. Africa and France. She's comparing Senegal, France. Senegal, really. France, everything is beautiful. Towns, buses, trains, trucks went by along the coastal highway. The heaviness of the traffic surprised her. Okay? She doesn't, she, I mean, Senegal rather, um, doesn't have heavy traffic like, like in France. So, you know, cars everywhere, people moving everywhere, etc. And she was astonished by everything. Of course, in, in Senegal, you're surrounded by black people. You work for the, for the Monsieur and his family, but, you know, the majority are black. In France, most people are white. And she's working for a white family, surrounded by, well, everything is beautiful, but surrounded by those white people, surrounded by cars, heavy traffic, etc., etc. Okay, um, less than one minute. We have to stop, but we will continue.